listen, those who listen to this message will know that we're here to share with them the love of God. And he loved them enough to lay down his life. That God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, I pray if there are those who need to make that decision that I made with my father as we knelt at the front of the church building that morning and we worshiped there, that my father had just finished preaching and he invited people who had never trusted Jesus, never repented of their sin and their sinning to come and ask God's forgiveness, to be forgiven, to be free of the guilt and the shame. And Lord, I thank you for the freedom that you gave me and for the day that you came into my heart. And I want everybody who's listening, everybody to know that Jesus will come into their heart. If they will just open the door and say, yes, Lord, I do believe that you love me and died for me. And I want to receive you and give you that rightful place in my own life that first place in my heart. Amen. I want you to teach me how to live, how to love others, how to be what you want me to be. And I ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. invitation. Yeah. Hey. 
want you to miss that. Whoever you may be, wherever you are, when you listen to this, if you get this far into the sermon, I'll know you're serious. <laughs> because I know there are a lot of people, a lot of Christians listening. In one place or another, people I've known in years past, that are still struggling with some of these truths, Russ. They're more concerned about what Paul meant here or there than they are about people out in the world who need Jesus. Amen. That's what bothers me. They'd rather fight some doctrinal battle than to get out there in the highways and edges and draw people in to hear the good news about Jesus. That's what bothers me. You work with big hearts. That's exactly right. And whether you agree with me or not is not really important. But be sure you agree with God on the main thing. That's what's important. Glad you passed it. Amen. You believe that, brother? I absolutely believe it. Amen. Well, that's two of us. That's two of us. Two in agreement. Amen. Amen. The message is clear. We love all of you who listen, all those we prayed for. God bless. God bless. And you all come back next week, bring somebody with you. I heard somebody say they walked all around the church trying to find their way. I'm sorry about that. That was John. But John, now he knows his way. Now he knows the way. He has no excuse. He is without excuse. Yeah, we just tell people without thinking, you know, we're in the chapel. Well, the chapel may mean to them the sanctuary. Right. The main sanctuary. This is the little chapel where we meet. Okay. So be sure you explain that if you invite someone who's never been here. Right. I really think we miss some folks because they just gave up. They were trying to find them. Yeah, that's true. I'm telling you. Well, I love you. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Pastor. I hope you come back. It was great, Pastor. God bless Thank you for preaching. Thank you. That's you know what I've had to do with that one, my confessor said. I didn't do anything. I want to make I want you to realize you don't know everything. Well, you know, you know, I'll tell you what. There are many things in the Bible that are beyond my knowing. But the good thing is there's some things that are absolutely clear. I'll say that's right. Yeah.